see our level damage. So, oh, I can back it. Man, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. Like, oh, wait, this could be a lot of damage right here. Oh, never mind. I take it back. It's another cool. <laughs> wow. Vortex kick. Vortex kick. Arch is down. That that's game. Oh, wow. wow. That's game. All right, welcome back to WBEL Season 2. So uh, this is the uh, Blind Division Week 6. As usual, I'm with uh, my friend uh, Chise. Hello there. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into the uh, standings. But just before, I just want to point something. We've only received uh, two comments so far that we didn't like, but we accept criticism. It's really not, uh, I mean, we're doing this for our first time. We're doing this for fun, not for money, anything. So uh, we'd like to improve and receive comments. That, that's really fine. But please don't be harsh on the shortcaster, especially uh, uh, the new ones. Uh, I mean, if we want this league to keep running, we want them to do their thing with confidence. If you go and just say, like, uh, they're not good, it's not uh, helpful at all, so, so you can criticize, but please at least give some uh, helpful uh, feedback, so. Um, it is our first time doing this kind of thing, and we are doing it for fun. Uh, always looking to have some sort of uh, feedback of what I can work on and how, how I can improve, and I'm sure other shoutcasters feel the same way, so if you do have constructive criticism to leave, um, I'm always welcome and will try my best to incorporate that into the shoutcasting, but uh, yeah, if you're just being rude for the sake of being rude, then, you know, it's like Mom always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say it at all, <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, so let's jump into the uh, standings. All right, so uh, I'm still first with uh, five points, uh, only one kill uh, away from uh, Greatestness, who also have uh, five points. After this, we got uh, Meichen, Keisan, and Sushi, all with three points. And finally, for the last playoff spot uh, currently, we have Chisei. And after this, uh, we got uh, Orange, Magman, Mao, and Ereshmelt, all with one point. All right, so we're wishing them all luck, and uh, let's jump into the first fight. All right, so first match of the day, we got Mao against Kaysan. So on Mao's side, we got Whisper, Lightning, and Ravius. On Kaysan's side, we got Lightning, Aerith, and Pronto. So we have a double uh, Lightning confrontation. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in seeing how uh, Kaysan's Lightning stacks up against Mao's right here. Who masters I mean, the Lightning the best? <laughs> yeah. I mean, looking at Mal's side, he's running both a lightning uh, unit with and another uh, knight unit with. So in terms of VC synergy and elemental synergy, I had imagined Mal's probably has more of a chance to be able to deal some good damage. Uh, whereas on Kaysan's side, he has a bit of a, a mixture of everything, so might not be individually as strong, but he's running the Prompto with, who also I saw get that uh, Jealous Wrath buff off, so he has a chance to inflict Berserk if he gets some damage in pretty early. So that could be really scary for Mao if that happens, especially with the Lightning being off by herself on the side with yeah. uh, the Whisper. And I don't like this. <laughs> I don't either, especially because the, 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 the damage dealers are around that side. So if Lightning has her Gunner sub on, okay, she doesn't look she's in range right now at least, and so she's able to get her Pursuit buff off, which is good. Uh, but if she has her Gunner sub on, she can chain with Prompto. Prompto might be in range. He is in range mm. with the spell spread, being able to get some early damage off on the Lightning, taking off that haste, which is crucial. Life Typhon, okay, so a uh, good chunk of damage on that Prompto, but uh, very low on that Lightning and Holy Prayer, so uh, it's gone. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> next we got uh, Whisper. Air Type Flutter, all right, so it's going to be big for him. Oh no, right alongside the Lightning. So he forgot to uh, drop the affinity from the Whisper. All right, so Rev, yes, uh, going on the side. Which one has the more hate? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, all right. So at least it was the Ravius. So next we got uh, Prompto. Is he in range to hit the Ravius? Oh no, but okay. So there was no shift of, of eight, uh, or because a uh, uh, Whisper was uh, too far uh, behind. So we got uh, a Rift. So guard Ace. So the Lightning is going to be Aced. Uh, all right. So uh, this Lightning has to do a lot of damage right now. So not able to kill that Prompto. So next we got uh, Kason's Lightning. So what is she going to do? So this spell spread and killing the <laughs> lightning. We've seen DPS Whisper do some work sometimes. Took out the Prompto <laughs> at least. I mean, I don't know if she'll have what it takes to be able to take out a lightning with an Aerith support, but 
It's a non-zero chance. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the Rabies bringing that hate, it allows Whisper to kind of come in the back line and just be able to deal some damage. There's a chance. There's there's a path. It's just a very hard path to climb, especially with Kaysan's lightning doing so much damage. I've tested a lot this week for uh, guys to help them uh, mock because uh, this map was really weird. And all Ooh. the times that I used those uh, uh, support units, there, it was always a struggle, especially for the devouts uh, like uh, Valet. They were all, they were all <laughs> always sticking in the back. All right, so uh, Arif is gone. That's and big. That's that's exactly what Mal needs for it to have a chance. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. But oh, so we have the courage on the uh, Rabies. And, and the uh, follow-up's gone, so she's able to live. <laughs> Counter a shot oh. <laughs> and more AP, so it's going to be big. <laughs> And, and yeah, I really have to uh, give this to Kaysan. The tuning he, he put on his Aerith was uh, really great because that Aerith, uh, honestly, was a clutch, was always there to heal and to support. Yeah, that, that Aerith was huge this match. And I'll wrap it up right there. Um, I think that there was too many things that went uh, really well on Kaysan's side to uh, decide a, a, a key of the match. Um, uh, you'll probably go along uh, with me, but uh, I think that it, it was it, it really didn't start uh, well for uh, Mao with the initial positioning. Um, the damage wasn't there from Mao's side, but it's not too bad because I think at least uh, his tanks uh, did a pretty good job. And also there was uh, this air riff that was uh, really nicely uh, tuned. Yep, I mean, couldn't have said it better myself. I was going to say exactly the same thing as the damage from Mal. Wasn't exactly on the same level as Kaysan's, uh, but at the same time, you know, given enough time, the lightning would have eventually gotten there if the tanks were able to soak up some more damage. So I think I would have to definitely give it to the initial positioning. Uh, being able to d take out that lightning relatively early in the fight was pretty huge for Kaysan. Yeah, for this map, I don't like the uh, units uh, starting all grouped up. But uh, on Kaysan's side, uh, it went uh, really well, so uh, it did a, a great job. Agreed. All right, so uh, GG to both players and uh, congratulations to Kaysan. Yep, GG to both players. All right, so next match, we got Chize against Sushis. So on Chize's side, we got Griford, Hope, and Alshra. On Sushi's side, we got Mish, Oldoa, and Severo. So uh, Chize, what was your train of thought? So yeah, my train of thought going into this match was Sushi has a lot of very scary units, especially for this map. So uh, top three I was looking at were the A2, the Irvine, and then the Strategist Oldoa. All three of them have teams that were very scary against mine. So I did what I could, and I was like, okay, well, A2 and uh, and Strategist Little Door are both ice. So I'm going to run a very ice resistant Grifford and try and have some uh, some success there. But, I, you know, we'll have to see how the match actually goes. <laughs> it's, uh, so I try to have Grifford be a bit of a tank, but we'll still be able to deal some damage. But uh, the real damage dealer, of course, is Hope here. Uh, Alistair can put out some some solid damage as well, but I had to bring out my boy Hope. He's one of my favorites. Uh, getting some additional damage there in the beginning, mostly to have them group up. Uh, but uh, So you can see that Ice Resistance buff I put on there as well. So Grifford has the Frost Ring and the Ice Resistance buff, so he should probably be up to around 60 or 70 Ice Resist at this point. Uh, so he's uh, definitely tanky against that. I still had the physical buff on, even though it's not going to help me against this team. I just want to make sure that the initial buff rotation was going to work. I was really expecting the A2 and the Irvine, so I was really sad to see this team come out. Especially having the oh. before. And then the Faraga just... So much damage from the Mish. Shunked him. And they're all aced. Alright, mm -hmm. so I hope that uh, Hope has uh, some healing in his kit. <laughs> or at least I'll try. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, okay. So uh, straight for damage. So last resort. So this is uh, Hope's new LB. So it is now a guaranteed it move. And killing that Mish. And but barely doing any scratches on that old Oa. So next we got. Oh, so it was an ace. Oh, unfortunately. All right. So we got Grifford. He has to do damage now because I think that he's dead next turn. So. <laughs> oh, but the Mish is gone. The Mish is gone. It's true. 
All right, so it is LB so little damage again, and now we got Sivro. Is he able to finish up that Griford Wataraga? Let's see. And yes, unfortunately for you. So uh, we got Oldoa next, and very low damage on that Hope. Uh, right. So Hope uh, at least I, I really hope that he's going able to uh, bring down that uh, several but he has courage so let's see uh, is she able uh, is a short in range for a quick end? no so she's going for damage so 2k in removing buff all right so it, oh so it's uh, really not bad and i hope doing a lot of damage but not enough to uh, pop that courage so next uh, water i got on both units uh, killing the l shred it's going to be really big uh, and the eight down on that uh, i hope is going to be pretty hopeless all right so <laughs> And oh, so only a single targeted attack on that old. Uh, um, yep, uh, I'm sorry, Cheesy, but I don't think that you've won. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always the ch no, there's no chance. <laughs> there's no chance. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't have mattered anyway because, uh, like you mentioned before, he did have the courage. But that little flame right there, yeah. being uh, in between the two, meant he wasn't able to get any uh, AoE targets off, so he wasn't able to hit the Severo, because the Eldoa still had hate after all of that. Uh, so yeah, it was a little unfortunate, but like I said, it wouldn't have changed anything, because he still had the courage. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, th that's something that I noticed on this map. The fire pits are really big. <laughs> it prevents a lot of good AoEs. Um, yeah, I really have to give the key of the match to uh, the uh, old Doha. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what was on Sushi's mind, but uh, I think that she pretty much uh, prevented uh, all your uh, damage sources. Oh yeah, I, I don't think... I was even thinking about it afterwards, and I was like, I don't think I really had any good answer to that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I do have two fire units, so I have the Revelka and the Lilith, but... The Revelka, maybe? But even then, like, it, it, the Severo probably would have taken her out before she even got a chance to get close, so... Uh, I think that this team is very, very good against mine, uh, unfortunately. But I think this, I have to check my, check my opponents again. I think this is the last team that has, uh, the last uh, player that has this team. So <laughs> please stop bringing this team against me because I can't do anything against it. Uh, but no, it's uh, it was very well prepared because I, I did mock against an A2 and I felt pretty good against the A2 builds. And then Irvine, I had uh, hate. I did have the hate on my Griffith as well, so I was hoping to be able to get in range from an Irvine, and uh, I had the the physical barrier and all that stuff. So I felt pretty good against the A2 and Irvine teams, or at least like a good fighting chance. This one though, no, I it was. I, I, I knew it was over from the select screen. <laughs> I was hoping that Hope could get there, and he did do a good like seven thousand, eight thousand damage with the Fisher. Uh, but she healed it all back, and that was the only thing that did any substantial damage. So yeah, it was it was rough. Yeah, uh, Sushi's initial rotation was really great because uh, his units were really greatly placed. Uh, his uh, two DPSs, uh, which are two midgets, uh, really <laughs> did a ton of damage and were really well protected by the map. So uh, yeah, uh, really a, a good job uh, from Sushi. So a GG to uh, both players, and uh, congratulations to Sushi. Yep, GG to Sushi. All right, so next matchup, we got RNG against Mogman. So on RNG's side, we got A2, Auron, and Learte. On Mogman's side, we got Sergius, Glaciella, and Astrius. So let's check that out. All right, so over on RNG's side, I see the A2. So, you know, now that you guys win with Squall, probably looking to branch out, get some more of his units uh, to get some, get some play time to make sure he gets an extra standings point. Uh, A2 running backwards using her re-raise buff. Once again, always important to make sure that gets off and that she doesn't get baited out before that becomes online because she's a much, much worse unit when that's not online. <laughs> uh, Mogman, on the other hand, uh, running the triple... Oh, sorry, running a, um, the water and ice connection there with two <laughs> spear units. And uh, the Glaciella and Sergius. I'm expecting to do a lot of work on this map. Uh... I this map with just like the varying heights and random you know <laughs> obstructions here and there it's like I always think spear units I think that's a really huge uh, boon to the uh, these yeah. units on this map so they should be able to navigate and get some damage out really well oh. and the first damage coming out very low 
Yeah, so uh, from what I can see so far, it's uh, really uh, a nice uh, spear uh, resistance stacking. So next we got Ren and Man, so a lot of damage on that Surges. So that's really not good because Surges is known for, for uh, his uh, slash tanking. All right, so uh, our run, so Tornado, so we got his LB, so that's going to give him a, a big barrier, but uh, with so... <laughs> All right, so killing the Surges and doing a big chunk on that Glacella. So, uh, uh, Liartes, uh, okay, charging something, let's see. So, cross destruction, not able to kill that uh, Liarte though. Uh, mega charge, all oh, right, so a uh, unit uh, resistance down on that Glacella, but she's so low that it's won't going to matter. And, uh, <laughs> ah, Glacella wasting her AP on that uh, Liarte, so Liarte is down. Next, we got A2, so probably finishing up that Glacella. So, yes, she's going to jump and recover her HP, even though it was uh, full. All right, so next, uh, not doing any buff just uh, walking forward uh, marching to his death so the next we got the uh, Astrius Tiger Ma so doing uh, really not a lot on both of those units next we got the Auron auto attack on that uh, Astrius for 2k and next we got uh, AA2 so we got the LB so uh, yeah I don't think that Mogman is going to recover from that and we got 6k immobilized and slow on the Astrius <laughs> who is killing uh, Oran. So uh, we got a pretty crippled uh, <laughs> Astrius against a fully elf uh, E2. And it's done with the curage removal. Yeah. I mean, like I said, there was a little bit of hope towards the end there, just a, a, a sliver of hope when uh, Oran rock walked forward and uh, didn't use any buffs because he didn't have any AP at that moment. So he wasn't going to be able to help contribute to the damage. And with Glaciella being on the other side uh, a, a turn earlier, that meant that they couldn't get caught up in AoE. So there was like a small path to victory there, but the slow, just completely neutering that Astrius and then the Courage removal, like both of those two things just completely sealed the deal for Oran there. So it, it there was like already like a 99% chance that he was going to win, but those, th those made it 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like on the Orange's side we got uh, some uh, water resist tanking and uh, spear resist. So um, yeah, I, I think fa from the start uh, Mogman didn't add a chance only because of this. We A2 is pretty good at first because of our buffs to tank damage, but uh, with all those uh, resistances that were stacked, uh, he aimed right. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Only taking, I think it was like 600 damage or something from the first hit from Glaciella was... Uh, yeah, a good sign that this map wasn't gonna, gonna go in Mogman's favor. Uh, I was really hoping the Asterisk would come in and be able to deal a lot of damage. I'm maybe thinking that maybe Orin just stacked all into Pierce resistance and didn't wasn't able to build enough slash resistance. But uh, the Asterisk was also not was doing good damage. Don't get me wrong, but it's not doing as much as needed to compensate for what the Surges and the Glacial were lacking. Yeah, Mogman told me that. Uh... <laughs> he talked that uh, the orange will bring a uh, um, squall, <laughs> so uh, he was actually <laughs> prepped for lightning. Uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunately for him, it didn't win uh, this way. Yeah, like I, said, I think uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm, I'm sure orange is probably wanting to get that uh, standings point as well. So to do that, he'll probably have to go some units other than a squall. <laughs> 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 squall was able to put in some work in the previous week, but. Uh, it's time to give his other units a chance to shine, and shine they did. A2 still standing with about 10,000 health there. Very healthy and a pretty convincing win on his side. Yeah, there's another thing also is that uh, with Astrius, because of a follow-up, uh, players tend to stack up on uh, Man Eater, but a is a machine, so right. <laughs> it doesn't right. work. <laughs> Very true, very true. That's that's also a really difficult thing because, yeah, the Man Eater is one of the best ways to increase the damage from that follow up buff. But if that's the route that Mogman went, yeah, that's not going to help against A2. All right, so GG to both players and uh, congratulations to Oranger for his uh, second win in a row. Yep, GG to both players. All right, so next match, we got Greatness against Machen. So on Greatness side, we got Dia, Agrius, and Amnelis. On Machen side, we got uh, Winter, Victora, uh, Sweetheart Salier, and Original Salier. So let's check this out. Yep, let's see what happens. So over on Greatness side, uh, we have, you know, it's the water and ice combo. 
Uh, Day I ring back back to already get her physical shield up and her agility buff on everybody. Physical shield's only really gonna help against the Winter Victoria, but that could be really big based off of where the Winter Victoria is positioned. So I don't know how much damage she's gonna be able to deal, but I think one of the big things in this match is going to be how much uh, how far ahead this Agrius can get ahead, and uh, also how much damage this Winter Victoria can get online before the enemy gets closer. Uh, so magic shield coming up too, that's going to be a lot more helpful than the physical shield. Uh, looks like though the Winter Victoria is positioned right across, so she wasn't in range to be able to deal damage turn 1, but turn 2 she should be able to get out there. Uh, so um, almost all the buffs that you'd want to see come out from either team are online. Uh, the only thing that's yeah. missing uh, would be a little bit of haste I'd say over on Grayson's side, but I mean, so he might not even need it, but all of his team is currently still stacked up. The Agrius is not getting ahead, and she's not one of those next-gen units that have an aura on her, so uh, her being grouped up with the team is not something that you really want to be seeing. And with, I think only the Dea has the physical shield up, but at the same time, the Winter Victoria still isn't in range. She has the bow tie on, so she's only I only saw her move two squares. So she's still in range, but the Greatestness could quickly get in range themselves. And there's the haste <laughs> that I just mentioned was missing. So this could be scary formation now that uh, the teams are getting a bit closer and there's not been any damage put online. Cross discharge. And then only a few damage target. on that Agrius, yeah. And all move and ace are removed from that cellar, so it's going to be big. So next we got uh, Agrius, so Taunting Blade on that Victoria, so really well tank. So next we got uh, Victoria's response, so uh, she could hit a lot of characters, so let's see what she's going to use. So break spread, so, alright, so uh, re removing, uh, debuffing some attack in the magic. So next we got uh, Analyst, so she's going to be able to hit them all with uh, Select 2, uh, except the Salir, of course. So next we got Salir, alright, so Select 2 and killing that Salir, but she had re-raise at least. So next is going to be Salir Ska, so what um, did uh, she use? So we got Twin She Rupture, oh, okay, so uh, Salir was able to go first uh, from the dead. Uh, so Tandaga. <laughs> So um, f about 4k on both, that's not so bad, so uh, now we have uh, Dia uh, killing off uh, that uh, Salir. Next we got Agrias, is she able to kill that Victoria? So, uh, <laughs> alright, oh. <laughs> if it wasn't the case, there was a disable, so uh, she will right. be uh, kind of dead. So next we got Annalise, uh, able to hit uh, that Salir, so let's see, for on Pulse. So uh, she's thinking pretty well, but uh, unfortunately I don't think that she can uh, 1v3 this fight. Yeah, with the damage that she put out earlier, it would be she'd need to put out a little bit more damage. I think she only did about three to four thousand the first time around, and Amnilis is still sitting there with five thousand. And yeah, even if she did get the cast off, it'd be unfortunate because I don't think she had the damage there at the end. Yeah, that was a rough matchup for Machen. He doesn't have a really big uh, magical tank on this uh, roster, so uh, I knew that it was a troublesome roster for him. Yeah, I think from the beginning it was a little bit rough uh, just because of the, the Sweetheart Salir being only able to single target the Agrius there. Once again, the, yeah. the fire pits and the heights on this map are really tricky to be able to get some AoEs off uh, for some units, especially some of these older units that don't have the crazy ranges yeah. and range heights that new units have. Uh, so only going for the, the magic tank and only being able to do single target was a really, really rough start. And also, um, you know, it would have been nice to have a little bit more range on the Winter Victoria. I get that she, you know, we definitely don't want to get her to get baited out before she gets her buffs off, but only being able to get like one round of damage in before they were able to close the gap and start being able to hit her as well also meant that uh, her damage couldn't get, uh, uh, you know, a lot of damage on, on the enemy team before the engage happened as well because she still was able to deal about a good 3,000 to the whole enemy team, so not a, not a bad chunk of damage by any means. Uh, if she was able to get one more round of that, that could have been, you know, really big but uh, unfortunately the she was a li had a little bit out of range there and uh, the uh, I mean Mason team as a whole was just a little bit out of range I think if they just had like one or two more blocks of range uh, it would have been a way different story but I mean that, that can be said about a lot of matches too <laughs> yeah those uh, fire pits uh, prevented a lot of attacks but it was on both sides so the, yeah they were troublesome for both players uh, except maybe the analyst this uh, select 2 has such a big range and it, it it's does. so hard so uh, yeah uh, it, it was uh, really a nice unit to bring on that map I uh, absolutely agree. That's what exactly what I was about to say is that, yeah, the fire pits hurt everybody except for probably Amnilis. The Select 2 is really, really good here. Uh, being able to get across the wall, across all the heights, it's, 
it worked out very well. And uh, one other thing I will point out was I was actually very surprised about how well, I mean, there was a magic barrier. I think it might have still been up, which might have been the reason why it was so little, but the Salir only dealing about three to 4,000 on the Amnalist, even despite the elemental advantage, uh, was a little surprising to see, but I think it was probably because of the magic barrier that Amnalist put up at the beginning of the fight. I think it was still online at that time. Uh, so that was one thing that I was expecting to be kind of the turning point in the fight. Uh, if Salir was able to one-shot that Amnalist or bring her very low for the Sweetheart Salir to finish her off, but uh, unfortunately that wasn't the case. Yeah, it, it looks like uh, the team was called uh, from a great distance. I think that he knew that the Machen had some uh, units that he needed to use until the end of the season. So uh, yeah, it was a great prep uh, coming from a great distance. All right, so uh, GG to both players and a uh, good job on the greatness side, I guess. <laughs> yeah, GG's again. <laughs> GG to both players. Bonjour tout le monde, bonjour les fans, euh, je suis présentement avec R.H. Melt, donc, euh, qui est un joueur français tout comme moi. Alors, en fait, euh, je, moi je viens pas de France, je viens du, du Canada, mmh. donc Montréal, mais toi vraiment tu vis en France. Bonjour R.H. Melt. C'est ça. Salut tout le monde. <rire> et, et là les gens vont, vont vraiment se, se moquer de moi parce que je sais pas pourquoi c'est un truc, euh, quand on parle en français, on, on adopte leur, euh, leur accent, donc euh, normalement je parle un peu plus comme ça. <rire> <rire> non, t'inquiète. Euh, donc, euh, comment vas-tu euh, de ton côté Comment tu trouves le tournoi jusqu'ici ouais, Franchement, c'est très sympa. Je gagne pas beaucoup, mais c'est très sympa. <rire> euh, euh... Non, ouais, je... Je, je suis pas venu ici pour gagner, je suis vraiment venu ici pour jouer, donc euh, c'est même pas dérangeant. <rire> Uh, all right, so uh, it was a prank. Uh, we're not going to continue uh, in French uh, during uh, yeah. uh, during all the fight. So uh, yeah, currently we both bring a physical team, but I, I think on uh, that on your side you didn't add uh, some magical option anyway. Yeah, uh, I did have a, a little dealer, but uh, it's <laughs> the only one uh, which is magical. All right, so uh, let's see uh, what's the entire team. Yeah. So good uh, luck. <laughs> yeah, to you too. So uh, on my side, uh, I think that you guessed that I was uh, bringing a uh, flag brewer Glashila. Yes. <laughs> uh, I guessed the exact same team. Same. <laughs> so uh, didn't build uh, specifically for it, but guessed it. Yeah. So I I built specifically for your team, um, but yeah, it's always tricky with the initial placement. Um, <laughs> Immobilize is going to be big, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, that's the thing with uh, Pierce, is that when you guess that the other is going to be Pierce and mm. that you build uh, against it, it's, uh, the damage is going to be very low. So let's see if any of us has the damage. So it didn't start very well with uh, only uh, one third uh, on that uh, Lorenzo. And Fang is, has been able to hit uh, my two squishies. All right, so uh, <laughs> Lorenzo is too far, unfortunately. So Glassy is going to use another buff. Oh. All right. So she's the, a bit far. She's uh, really Your far. Glassy. But uh, it was intended. Oh. Okay, so Sosha is going in that the air. Is good. Ah, that damn Lorenzo. So uh, who Sosha was aiming? Both dragon die. Ah, oh, even oh. if he moved, he was still cocked. Oh. Okay, that's really not looking well for me. And also, and you're even able to hit uh, the uh, flagberry Glashela from there. So, and Surges is still alive, so that's already yeah. good. Who is he going to bring? That damn Lorenzo again. At least there's one uh, threat uh, that's uh, gone. Yeah. So next is going to be uh, Flagberry Glaciella and aiming Valkyrie Beers. Is she able to hit them both though? Uh, no, only the Sosha. Oh, that's really big on your side. Next we have the Sosha. She can't back a punch. I don't know. Okay, so the she's, going, she's going for yeah. the Surges, so that's good. Uh, I guess that she had the, the kill. Ouch. Okay, so that's uh, Sosha is uh, jumping uh, in the air for nothing. Yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, Flagberry Gashiela, does she still have the range for both? I guess yes. Triple cross, not even able to kill that Sosha though. So yeah, we both prep against uh, Persing. 
Alright, yeah. so break trust. Okay, so about 4k on that Glaciella. Next, we have Sosha. She doesn't have any AP, so uh, she's going to use a buff. Next is a uh, Flagberry Glaciella. Uh, I yeah, don't I like the positioning though. I don't think she's able to hit them both because of the flames. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, uh, killing that uh, Sosha. So, uh, next is a uh, 1v1. But yours doesn't have AP anymore. Let's see the situation yeah. on my side. 63, so it's a little bit better. So let's see. Shining Conviction nearly killing that thing. So uh, it's. Uh, I think I it's the last chance. Do you have a Courage Removal? No. I <coughs> do not No, but I hit. Oh, that's so close. <laughs> and just enough to kill you. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. I do not have the Courage. Oh, that was so oh. damn close. Yeah, that's sad. That's so heartbreaking for you, sorry man. Nah, honestly, I I felt that it was meant to happen, especially <laughs> with the uh, positioning and the immobilize on the Lorenzo. Like, it was hard, because I, I did prep for the immobilized, and I have a channel that immune against it. Okay. And he just didn't he didn't have time to to use it. Yeah. <laughs> for being in the <laughs> Yeah, it's really, Lorenzo is really really slow. Yeah. I'm kind of shocked is that your fang didn't use her LB at all. Yeah, but I, I don't know if it's what you did, but probably because uh, you just had uh, too much as a unit res, you never wear um, like in a good area where I could just uh, strike all of them. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, that's the thing with this Terran. Uh, I mock for other players and use uh, units like a Valade and I was never able to make him work. Uh, this Terran is so uh, despicable. <laughs> like, yeah. it, it's really uh, hard to reach the other side and uh, we saw it with my Glassy at the end. Your two units, they were pl practically hugging each other and she uh, still went for a single targeted attack on that Sosha. Uh, at this time I thought that I was done, <laughs> so uh, fortunately on your side yeah. uh, I had just enough uh, piercing resistance to uh, to counter you. That's what I wanted to do with uh, the Surges. Uh, I wanted him to uh, soak a little bit of hits and that's why I also pump up his defense so that your Fang will use uh, yeah. her LB and waste it on, on him but it wasn't the case in the end. Yeah, and uh, the fact that uh, the glassy uh, at the end was always in range for, for her to be hit uh, with a solo target uh, hit with a Sarge's tool, like, that's maybe why he didn't get it by the limit break too. And even the Susha, I was uh, quite surprised uh, to see her survive uh, so well. Yeah. yeah, on your side, uh, uh, the bulkiness was there. I, I did build uh, a bit in a uh, pierce uh, resistance for her, but not that much, honestly. Well, in the end, uh, it was uh, extremely close. Uh, I think that you yeah. can still be uh, proud of uh, the, this fight. Uh, I hope that you had fun. Yeah, I, that was very fun. Uh, a little bit over, but uh, very fun. Uh, <laughs> maybe next time I will just bring a 100% a uh, uh, Pierce Race team. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Maybe I won't bring a Pierce the uh, next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, thank you, uh, Reshmel, for doing this. It was really uh, nice uh, talking to you. Uh, we, uh, yeah. we had the opportunity to talk uh, before uh, the fight. I did enjoy my time with you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, so uh, good luck for, for the rest of the tournament. Bye-bye. Yeah, you too. Goodbye, everyone. All right, so this is it for this week. So uh, we finally have a clear uh, front runner with myself with the uh, seven points because of uh, this extra point. So uh, screw you, uh, greatness. So next <laughs> <laughs> we got greatness with the uh, six point, still undefeated with a zero six record. And uh, next we got a uh, Kason and Sushi. Uh, Kason has the edge currently with the uh, three more kills. And after this we got Machen in the fifth place with the uh, three points. And then we got RNJ with uh, two points and only two kills in front of you. So that's why it bumped you. And uh, finally, uh, you got uh, yourself with two points. And then Magman, Mao and Eresh Melt with one point. It's going to be really tough for Magman, Mao and Eresh Melt with one point. I think it's still feasible, but it's going to be really harsh if uh, RNJ wins the next fight. Yeah, agreed. Um, I think uh, as far as I've already fought Erish Melt and I fought Mao, so I think Mogman is the last one for me to fight uh, in terms of the bottom three. So 
Uh, my fellow guildy has his work cut out for him. <laughs> I'm not going to go easy on you. But uh, no, I'm, I'm excited for the last couple of weeks here. Um, like I said, the only three weeks left. Once again, friendly reminder, get your units in. You see Numero in first place with that extra point. Make sure you uh, don't end the season being the only one without that extra point, because that will matter a lot. With only nine points... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to reveal your secret <laughs> with only no! 9 points uh, available uh, without the extra point. But make, make sure you use your units uh, at almost any cost, I would say, at this point. <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for watching. So uh, let's see you in the next video. See you then. Thank you again.